Here's a question that was discussed today. What do you do under a, an acid-base situation? take the blood gases and in comes respiratory therapy with the slip and the, and, and the values of your blood gases. What's the first number you look at? Well, it's pretty obvious. Most, almost everyone will look first at the pH. If the pH is below 7.4, then we have an acidosis. If it's above 7.4, then we have an alkalosis. Now, the pH in our body always is alkalotic, slightly alkalotic, 7.4. Even if it goes below 7.4, it remains alkalotic, but we call it acidosis. Below 7.4, too many hydrogens. It's an acidosis. Above 7.4, that's the easy part because it remains alkalosis, and it's an alkalosis. Too much bicarbonate, too much, too little hydrogen. which translates to little, to little PCO2. Anyways, now that you have the pH and you are you, you determine that you have an alkalosis or, or an acidosis, what's the next value you look at? What is the next value you look at? You look at PCO2. It's, it's, so, it's so difficult to look at the PCO2 second. I don't know why. Here's the message. After you look at the pH, after you look at the pH, the next thing to look at is chord, I tell you. After you look at the pH, the next thing to look at is Why do you look at anything else? After you look at the pH, the next thing to look at is, and here you are, what? PCO2. If the PCO2, let's suppose you saw your little slip from respiratory therapy, and your PCO2, and you, you, you determine that you have a, an acidosis. Your, your pH is below 7.4. The next value to look at, you, have, you already know you have an acidosis. The next value to look at is, huh? That's the next value look at, PCO2. So you have an acidosis and your PCO2, you have two options. Your PCO2 is elevated or your PCO2 is, is low. If it's elevated, an elevated PCO2 gives acidosis. CO2 is acid, translates into acid in the body. PCO2, high PCO2 is acidic. You want to know why? I ask you, professors. PCO2 is acidic. In your mind, PCO2 means acid. High PCO2, you have a high PCO2, you have an acidosis. When you have acidosis, I said, I, I said that backwards. When you have an acidosis and you have a high PCO2, that's the cause. And every a third a third grade schooler knows that the acidosis, that the PCO2, that we breathe out PCO2, breathing. So high PCO2 in the setting of an acidosis, low pH, is respiratory. Now you have a respiratory acidosis. So where do you look for the cause? You look for the cause in the lungs. It's a respiratory problem. You have an airway obstruction in a little child. Asthmatic, COPD, 
Look in the history. Ask your questions. Examine. Examine your patient. You want some images? Take some images, of course. Low pH, high PCO2. Respiratory acidosis. The problem is respiratory. Now here comes the the main derailer. You have an acidosis. What's the next? You, you look at the pH. Oh, doctor, it's an acidosis. The pH is less than 7.4. What do you look at next? Now you have the pH. What do you look at next? If the PCO2, now you have it low, PCO2 is not causing the acidosis. The PCO2 is not causing the acidosis. Low pH, low PCO2, if they go down together, that's not respiratory, that's not the lung that's causing the problem, that's a metabolic acidosis. And when you think of metabolic acidosis, what's the next value? Here's a, this is where the, 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 the conversation went. Earlier, I, I, I failed to say that earlier we had a discussion about this. This is where the, the question was, what now that you know that you have a metabolic acidosis, what's the next value? And the student, well, students almost always respond, the professor, the bicarbonate. <laughs> what? What? The next value to look at is the anion cap. It's a simple addition. I, I suppose that bicarbonate is easier to see than add sodium plus potassium and subtract the cl cl chloride from it. Sodium plus, plus potassium and you subtract the chloride. It's it's right there. You, you asked for a CBC and a CMP, at least a BMP, and it has those values too. It has a sodium, 140, 140, and has potassium, is five maybe that's 145 and you subtract the chloride which is 110 sodium plus potassium minus chloride and it gives you the anion gap and it should give you about 12 8 to 12 Now, if the anion gap is normal, if you have a normal anion gap, then the, that's, that's the easiest. You think two things, basically, diarrhea or renal tubular acidosis. You think diarrhea or renal tubular acidosis. Now, the history can tell you also, if you have someone, if you have a, someone that's sniffing blue, that can also give you a normal anion gap. Now, if you have an increased anion gap, we have a metabolic acidosis with an increased uh, anion gap, an anion gap of 25, 32. Increased anion gap. You have a low pH, low PCO2 that tells you that this is a metabolic and not a respiratory acidosis. Now you look at the at, uh, anion gap. And if the anion gap is high, then you think that there is something there causing that mud pile. Something is causing that mud pile. There's an extra something that's causing that difference, that high gap in the negative charged uh, ions in the, in the circulatory system. Something is causing that mud pile. And that's a very clever mnemonic for an metabolic acidosis with an increased anion gap. The most common is methanol, the M for mud pile. Uh, the U is stands for uremia, uh, mud, 1D. The D is, uh, is a diabetic, diabetic patient. This is a diabetic patient where the keto acids are causing, the, are adding anions. Uh, Mud. P. P is f mostly for for drugs. 
very unusual drugs that you see occasionally, peraldehyde um, and uh, uh, fenor fenformin. Haven't seen one, but happens. Now, one of the most frequent ones, one of the very frequent ones that we see practicing in Venezuela, where there's a lot of tuberculosis, is acid. Um, as an acid can cause an increase anion gap. Mod pile, that's, that's a, the P is those two, two funny drugs. I, as an acid. L is for lactic acidosis. E is also very common in little children in eth ethanol glycol intoxication. And, uh, and then mud piles, S is uh, for aspirin salicylates. Salicylates can cause that too. There's your mud pile. Those are the causes of mud pile. So you see your pH. The first thing you look at after you see the pH is now. If what happens if your pH is over 7.4? If you have a an alkalosis, what happens if you have an alkalosis? Again, you have two options. One is a respiratory alkalosis, and the other one is uh, metabolic alkalosis. A respiratory alkalosis is opposite to the respiratory acidosis. The respiratory acidosis, you had, you you have um, a low pH with a high PCO2. Here, PCO2 and pH run together. In the alkalosis, high pH and low. Did I say? They run together. No, they as the same. They're the same as in the acidosis. They run opposite to each other. In the alkalosis, in the acidosis, they run with each other. Uh, so we have an acidosis. Uh, high p. Uh, we have an alkalosis. High pH. You should have the opposite. Alkalosis. If you have a respiratory problem, you have the opposite of the of the high of the high pH, which is a low PCO2. Low PCO2 in the setting of a high pH is respiratory. And you look look at respiratory and there's a long list of reasons for hyperventilating, um, especially altitude, high altitudes, and some very unusual uh, diseases that cause uh, hyperventilation. Overdoses don't cause hyperventilation. But anxiety, psychosis do. Psychiatric patients have uh, alkalosis for hyperventilation from hysteria, uh, but overdoses don't cause hyperventilation. Overdoses cause hypoventilation. Now, then, finally, you have the high. You still have a high pH with the high PCO2. If they run together, then that's a metabolic alkalosis. You don't have to look for um, an anion gap in this case. In this case, you look for volume. You look also for um, mainly uh, conditions that let lose volume. Uh, metabolic alkalosis with normal volemia is not possible. So look for vomiting. Look for diarrhea. That's acidosis. And that's alkalosis. That's acid base disturbances, acid base. First you look at the pH and after you look at the pH, what's the next value? That's right. <laughs>